So I actually started my whole gym, bodybuilding career, whatever you want to call it, back in around 2013. But back then I was only doing the most basic, simple, single joint isolation movements. I got practically nowhere. We had one of those all-in-one type machines where you've got like your pec deck and your row on the side. You can do some lat pull downs on it as well. And then we had a bunch of dumbbells that went up to like five kilos. And we actually bought some seven kilo ones and 10 kilo ones in town during that year. And I remember making practically no progress. And I remember at the end of year 11, one of my teachers had asked us all the question going into year 12. And it was like, do you think intelligence is something you can earn, like growing muscle, or it's something that you're born with, like your height? And I remember thinking in my head, no, that's bullcrap. You can't earn muscle. I've tried to earn muscle for a whole year. It doesn't work. You're either born with it or you're not. The people that just work out in the gym are on steroids. Obviously, in hindsight, it's because I was doing practically everything wrong. Like, I didn't even know what like how many how much protein you needed or anything i wasn't even keeping track of that back then but that's just to preface the rest of this video so i technically started in 2013 i really got back into it in 2014 we had a bit more home stuff but i didn't get to an actual gym until 2015 when i started uni and i've lost most of the pictures i've had that documented my progress throughout the whole time not that i really made a whole lot but this whole slide here from july to december 2015 that's pretty much the only pictures i have left and the only reason i have them was because i posted them all to a website called body space i believe it's kind of like an instagram and i think it was made by bodybuilding.com i don't think it's been worked on in years but it was kind of a thing back in 2015. Like, I'm not even too sure how I found it. I was probably perusing bodybuilding.com and found it somehow. But that's the only reason I have these pictures. If you look closely, you can see they're all posted on the 1st of November. Um, all of these pictures weren't actually from the 1st of November. It's just that was the day that I just happened to start posting on that forum. I'm pretty sure that all of these pictures were around March to July, but I can't be certain of that. But as you can see, it's pretty unimpressive. Like the picture on the left, uh, I guess there's a bit of a V taper there, but you can tell I'm quite chubby. And I don't believe I could even bench 70 kilos at that time so not a lot of strength so you know if you're gonna be chubby at least if you're gonna be a chubby gym rat at least be strong you know what I'm saying the second picture from the left you can see there's a little bit of arm definition but nothing too too impressive the next picture along I'm not even sure what I was trying to do there. I think I was trying to show off some pet gains. Like there's something there, but not a whole lot. And you can see I'm like covering the stomach area because like there's a little bit of abs there at the top, but you can have abs when you're like the top layer of abs when you're like 16% body fat or something. So I was aware of that and I was yeah hiding hiding the lower part of the abs because there was nothing there, just fat. Which you can obviously see on the picture to the far right. It's funny because that picture on the far right is taken at the toilets near the mall where my uni was, and still is. And the lighting there was really good, like you could flex your arm and you would look massive. And you looked kind of lean too. I'm not sure if everyone else has this, but I swear my pictures that I take, I look worse in them. Now, obviously that doesn't mean I looked like Ziz or anything in real life and my phone camera is just a hater, just downgrading my aesthetics. 
but you can see I really wasn't anything super shredded, but I thought I was kind of lean back then. It was funny. I ended 2015 with a cut, my first ever cut. I had contemplated doing one in 2014 as well, but back then I knew I wasn't big enough to justify a cut. And in retrospect, I probably wasn't big enough for one in 2015 either. Regardless, I did it. Now I did a keto because I watched a lot of Ziz and I watched, I mean, I watched a lot of him in 2014 as well, but also going into 2015, I was watching a lot of him as well. And he has one video where he talks about his cutting diet and he talks about ketosis. And I didn't bother to fact check his information. Now he wasn't necessarily wrong, but I didn't think of any other way to go about cutting. Like I didn't consider the whole calories in, calories out. Like I'm pretty sure I didn't even know what that was back then. Would have been nice to have someone like me back then to help me out. But regardless, I did a keto cut. I dropped from, a, I was about 83 kilos and I went down to like 77 in the span of a month. Now looking back, it's because my calories were way too low. Like I'm doing the quick math in my head and based on my diet back then, I was probably on around 1400 calories, which is absolutely nothing. In fact, I remember going to the gym one day and I couldn't even bench 50 kilos for two reps. Like that was just too much. I was just so exhausted because obviously you need carbs for energy. Now I'm not saying keto's bad or anything. It's obviously worked for a lot of people, but it just doesn't work for me personally. So that's how 2015 ended for me. If you're only looking at strictly from a whole gym perspective. Now, as for 2016, my training had slightly improved, but it wasn't much better. So one thing I didn't mention was in 2015, I was practically running a bro split. The whole Monday to Friday, didn't train on the weekends, and Monday chest day, Tuesday back day, Wednesday leg day, Thursday shoulders, Fridays, Fridays, Friday arms. So, yeah, not optimal because once again, I was basically, I just wanted to look like Ziz, and can you blame me, who doesn't? But I didn't realize back then it was three, there was three factors that controlled how you look like. One, how big your muscles were. Two, how little fat you had on your body, which would obviously carve your muscles and make them look more toned. I hate using that word, but it's probably the best word that I can think of at the moment. We could use the word lean too, but Regardless, those two factors, and three, your genetics. So my genetics aren't structured the same way as Ziz or the same way as anyone else, but I figured back then if I copy Ziz's routine, I'll look like him. So he ran a similar bro split as well. I did some exercises different, but yeah, either way, not completely optimal training, but you can make some progress on it. But as you're seeing on screen, 2016, it's basically a summary of my training for the year. So I moved away from Ziz. I did still watch some of his stuff, but I branched out into the whole fitness YouTube realm. Like I was aware of some of it back then, but it was basically just Ziz montages I kept watching over and over again. I ended up stumbling across Kino Body. Now he looked great, that viral video of him with the massive delts. I really just wanted to start to try and gun to look like him. But once again, I didn't realize the whole three things of build your muscles up, cut the fat down and your genetics. I just thought, well, if I train like him, I'll look like him. And he was obviously an advocate for the three day a week workout routine. Um, for those of you who don't know, that's basically his style. And it does work. Um, more frequency is better. However, the whole three day a week training split thing is for those who are really busy. And I wasn't really that busy in 2016. Like I definitely had time for even six workouts a week. But 
Nonetheless, most of 2016 was spent training three days a week and most of it was in a deficit too. I'm not gonna post a picture because it's embarrassing, but I did a photo shoot in April of 2016. And the only times I'd ever seen me with my shirt off was under like decent lighting. So this picture was taken, well this whole photo shoot was taken on a beach. And I just wore some clothes and stuff and like, oh, do you want to take your shirt off? I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, I can't look that bad. Jesus Christ. I was just horrified at how I looked. I didn't realize I was so fat. I was like 86 kilos back then, which is not too heavy for my standard now, but that's because I got a lot more muscle on me. I just looked like a fat tubby piece of crap. So literally as soon as I saw that photo that afternoon, I just whipped up a new cutting diet and I spent most of the year, like at least six months of it in a deficit to try and drop all that down. And even when I was coming out of the deficit, my surplus wasn't that large because I was like, I do not want to end up looking like that again. So the point of that is my, not only was I not having enough calories to grow, but I really wasn't training enough to grow. So not a lot of progress made this year either. But as you're seeing on the slide, it really helped me get good at pull-ups. I never used to be able to even do one. And now I can do like 40 kilo weighted pull-ups for at least five, depending on the day. But most people can't even do weighted pull-ups with like 10 kilos. So I think I have this training routine to thank for that because ever since I did this, I've always just been able to hold my pull-up strength no matter how long I take off gym or how sick I get. Well, I don't really get that sick, but you know, I'll take like three weeks off gym for exams or something and I can come back to my pull-up top set of five within like two weeks. Whereas if I skip out on squats and bench it takes me like a month to get back to it so what you're seeing on screen now is obviously two pictures of me in april in 2016. this was roughly the same time i did that photo shoot i was just talking about so as you can see i mean looking at it now i look like quite a pudgy little porker but i didn't see it back then because for some reason body dysmorphia hadn't kicked in yet. I have no idea how I went this long in the gym without it kicking in, but regardless, that's what I looked like in April of 2016 and that's when I started my cut. I was about 86 kilos at this point. So the pictures you're seeing on screen now are from around June slash July in 2016. As you can see, I've dropped a fair bit of weight I don't have the muffin top I used to have. And I thought I looked pretty decent here. Um, but to be honest, it's more so just the lighting. I really wasn't anything too special at this point. I basically look like your average, I guess, 15 year old footballer who's just got a bit of muscle from the footy training that they do. But obviously no bodybuilder. They're obviously no bodybuilder but that's what I look like in June slash July. So the pictures you're seeing now are further into the cut. And I don't know if it's just me or you guys can notice it too, but I actually look worse. Now, I honestly think it's just because of the lighting and the other two pics were quite optimal. As you can see, I, I seem to have lost a bit of muscle as well, but then I'm not super diced. Like you can see in the picture on the left, there's only like four abs is not like the six or eight pack which will come later and that will be relevant next year but i'll get to that when i get to that and you can see i just looked emaciated in the middle pick like i've got like weird shaped pecs the abs are weird as well it just yeah it's not a good look but it was better than being chubby in my eyes and then the pick on the the pick on the right, I'm not even sure why I took that, just some odd flex. But I guess it's good for body transformation things. Like, I don't really take pics like that. Like, I took a few in the coming years, which you will see. And you can see there's a big difference, but yeah. 
So now we're in November slash December of 2016 and as you can see from these pictures I start to look uh, quite a bit better to be honest. You can see the picture on the right I look like I've actually got arms in a t-shirt. The middle pic I look like I've actually got some pecs and some sort of abs and the two pics on the left were from a gym sesh I was wearing some extra small stringer. You can see the um the back gains from all the pull-ups and whatnot I was doing throughout the year. And there's a little bit of width, as you can see in the bottom pick too. I Actually, I haven't mentioned it in this video so far. I've mentioned it in another video on my other channel. But the reason I'm blurring my face out with that stupid cartoon looking drawing things that took me like five seconds to make is because I don't really want my identity to be a part of this. Like, I want it to be a whole separate thing. You know how people have like the faceless YouTubers or whatever, or they just do voiceovers and you never see what they look like? That's the path I'm trying to aim for. But as you can imagine, it's a bit tricky running a gym thing with obviously you're going to need your physique to show that you can walk the walk and talk the talk. So it's a bit hard to do that with not showing your face. It's easier to do it in like a corporate career related channel as you'll see on my other channel which I've probably linked already at some point. So here are some more pictures from that year. You can see on the left there's a bit of bicep development going on and in the last three pictures to the right you can see there's like a decent gym physique going on especially in the far right one. That's probably a combination of the angle and lighting but you could post this picture somewhere and nobody would dispute that you lift. I just did weighted chin-ups 28.75 kilos. I can't wait to see how my back looks this time next year. So at the start of the year, I remember I was able to do about three chin-ups body weight. And from going from three chin-ups at body weight to about 28, 29 kilos weighted for four reps, it's a pretty big leap. Now granted, obviously I did drop some weight, so maybe that weight increment is not as impressive, but the point is I was getting a lot better at the whole chin-up pull-up things. So before we go into 2017, I just want you to see this. So this is obviously in the same bathroom, wearing the same shorts, and you can see the difference in the weight loss. So this was quite motivating to see but this is nothing compared to what came in 2017. So I don't really have any pictures from January in 2017, but I've got a fair few from February. Now in February, I went on a Gold Coast trip with the boys from my high school. Sad react, we don't talk anymore. Low-key miss the lads, but nonetheless, people go their own paths, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Uh, to cut a long story short, we didn't really see each other much in 2015 and 2016, which were obviously the two years after we had graduated and finished high school. So we figured we'd all go on a trip together, that way we're all free at the same time, because some of us were working full time, some of us were at uni, some of us were working part time and had like sporting commitments, like they played semi-professionally. So we're like, if we all book time away, we'll all get to hang out. Now. Obviously there were a lot of pics taken here because it's Gold Coast and you don't you don't not post beach pics when you go to the Gold Coast. It's, it's not a thing, right? So no shortage of pics I took here. The top two on the left you can see a little bit lean, looked alright. The picture next that's closest to the Tinder picture, I'll talk about that in a sec. But you can see I looked kind of crap, to be honest. I think it was just terrible lighting. Obviously had a lot of junk there. That was probably later into the trip. And then the top picks were probably earlier into the trip. Maybe I did some sneaky ab, quick ab movements in the bedroom for the picture. I can't remember. But as you can see, it looked kind of okay for a little bit of it. Um, yeah, as for that Tinder picture, you, you can't not go on tinder when you're at the gold coast with the boys who are mostly single like you've got really no matches because 
you can see, obviously, I led with a rig pick. And I don't know if you've seen the boys in the Gold Coast, but they're all roid heads, so they all obviously make me look like trash, even now. But especially back then. So if you're a chick in the Gold Coast, why are you swapping right on this boy here? Like, you're not. So I figured I'd just chuck that in because it's funny. And it's also another rig pick. So what you're seeing now are some pictures I took after that trip. You can see I got some crappy little fake tattoo on it. The top pick you can see me trying to flex. There's a little bit of arm there, but not really a whole lot, hey. The bottom pick was um, obviously at the gym shortly afterwards. Then there's a picture of me in my bathroom with, that's a Dwight Howard Atlanta jersey. For those of you who can't tell what player that is, it's a very odd jersey to have. Pretty sure he was there for one season and it was, it was too big, but it was really comfy and I'm not even sure where that jersey is anymore. But I do like Dwight Howard. He was a beast in Orlando, obviously, but did you see his doubts when he was in, at, in Orlando? They were crazy. I remember my New Year's resolution for 2013 was to get shoulders like his. And nine years later, I still don't. But Jesus, they were crazy. They were like David Lades. They were probably even bigger, to be honest. But yeah, that's why I have a Dwight Howard Atlanta jersey. I just want to want to try and absorb his deltoid powers. Anyway, the picture to the right of that was a Snapchat my friend took. I was carrying a bag. Obviously, I did a sneaky flex. I was carrying the the bag of, obviously, one of our lady friends. And it was, like, whipped. Uh, whipped, or was I just using any excuse to get an arm pump? Anyway. So, the point of these pictures is just to show some of the progress. Like, nothing too impressive. The best pick's easily the one on the right at the gym by far, but that's got a pump, that's got lighting, that's that's obviously an outlier. So in this slide, there's a pretty large time gap because there wasn't a whole lot of pictures taken during this time. But as you can see, there was a little bit more gains there. The picture on the right of me washing my car, I looked like I had some sort of tone in my arms and some lats there. The two pictures on the left were me at me with my family at some events and you can see there's I've kind of filled out that t-shirt a little bit. Admittedly it might be a medium sized one and I may have rolled up the sleeves but you can tell there's a little bit of definition there. And the three miscellaneous gym picks on the front. I probably had the same physique in all of them, it's just some had different pumps and different lightings and some of them I maybe ate too much before the gym or drank too much. Like, I get bloated if I drink too much water. I don't know if that happens to you guys or, or whatnot, but regardless, there are just some more picks from 2017. So here are some more picks from around the same time frame in 2017. I honestly can't be too sure because these pictures were just kind of in some folder I just happened to find. But I know the picture on the right was when I was at my cousin's house in Perth so we'd gone to Perth for a wedding and obviously my diet and training was not really on point there but we weren't there for too long it was only like a week like I've taken longer than that off the gym for exams but I looked you know I look looking a little bit lean there so that's not too shabby there um there's a pic there of me doing that ziz pose I thought I had more bicep than that then I saw the picture and I was disappointed and the pic below it is kind of me trying to show off some arm, but th that shirt's kind of a weird length. I'm sure you guys have the same thing where there are those t-shirts that make your arm look small, and it's not the ones that fully cover your arm, it's the t-shirts that slightly show a little bit of your upper arm, but not enough to the point where they actually show a lot of the bicep. Or I could just be making up excuses as to why I'm small, or why I look small, but... Anyway, uh, there's pictures on the left too. You can see a little bit pudgy there, got some abs, some muscle definition starting to pop out. Like you can tell I'm putting on a bit of muscle, but nothing too impressive. And that top pic of me in the bathroom was, I think it was at that wedding. 
obviously had some food, was bloated, just so I'd get a sneaky flex in. Probably thought I looked better than I did at the time, which is why I took the pick. But, yeah. So in June, July, I went to Denmark for a study abroad tour for my university degree. Now this is relevant because obviously uh, we didn't train the whole time we were there. Some of the boys and I were actually looking at finding a gym, but it was in a very weird location. Like you had to walk down this sort of dark alley. Well, it wasn't dark, but it would have been dark at night. That was kind of a pointless thing to say, but the point is it was like a creepy looking alleyway and then you had to go up these like rigidy stairs. They didn't look too stable. And there was like graffiti on the walls and stuff. And the only time we were really going to get time to gym would be at night. And it was a little bit far from our hostel, so it wasn't exactly the safest thing. Like, we're literally halfway around the world from Oz. And it's, yeah, probably not a good idea to go somewhere that you'd get bad vibes from, hey. So, obviously training slipped a bit there. Now, the main reason I brought up the fact I was in Denmark, well, well the training thing, but... I was over there to represent my university for a study abroad program, obviously. And our university marks had came out around the time we were over there. Now, I didn't mention this before because it wasn't relevant, and this will be something I'll touch on in my gamification of life channel, not gainsification. Because this channel is about gym, but I can't not bring this up because it is relevant to how the rest of this year panned out. So I got my marks and I failed three out of four exams again. In the last two semesters that's a collective total of six out of eight exams failed. Now as if that wasn't bad enough I got a letter from the university saying well, I can't remember what it said, but it was basically implied, we don't know if you're cut out for this. Pick your grades up or we're going to kick you out. We're putting a restriction on your course. Basically, if you do four units, you can only fail one. If you do, well, if you do four units, you have to pass three. If you do three units, you have to pass two. And if you do one or two units, you have to pass them both or we're going to kick you out. So picture this, you're me you're halfway around the world with a bunch of people you've known for less than two weeks and the sole reason you're there is to further your career and you've not only just had a massive setback in grades again but the university that's meant to help you through all this is now telling you that they don't think you're cut out for this So this is probably the closest I've ever gotten to crying in public. And one of the other girls in the tour was genuinely, she sounded really concerned. She could probably tell in my eyes that I really wasn't having a good time right then and there. Because we got all our marks during the lunch break in the class and the class, we all kind of had lunch breaks in that class, if that makes sense. So basically we were all around the wrong spot. We were all around the one spot when we all got our marks at the same time. I remember looking at nutrition courses during this time because it was really getting to my head. I was like, maybe I'm not cut out for this. I mean, I like gym anyway and I'm doing like a business commerce related d degree. Maybe I should do something gym related. So I mulled over it for a few days. It occupied a lot of my headspace. And I was really worried I was going to fail that study abroad tour. Like, obviously I didn't. And I don't think you really can. One of the guys in the group was saying how the university would manipulate your marks anyway. But when we got back to Australia, I decided I'll do two units. And then from there, I'll see how I go in 2018. I convinced myself that this was just a small road bump in my path in life and as it turns out it was so the study abroad tour ends i get back to australia 
I got back on the midnight, went to sleep, and the next thing I did the next day was I literally went to the gym. A couple of my friends and my mum were a little bit shocked at that. I was like, well, I haven't gymmed for three weeks, so yeah. So I got back into it. I took my study a little more seriously, but that's not what we're here to talk about. That all went fine and well eventually, but another thing I realized was if I'm going to suck at this whole study thing, then I better get shredded. September rolls around. My cut's about halfway done. As you can see, I have the best ab definition I've ever had in my whole life. Even though it's not too impressive there. But that was just me getting warmed up. We're fucking ready. I got as lean as I've ever been in my whole life and my training had never been this good or this consistent. I was so hungry, but I had my eyes on the prize. And as you can see, I got my prize. I maintained this for the rest of the year. The most I went to was a maintenance calorie intake. For some of it, I actually asked uh, Body Space whether I should keep cutting or not. And everyone was like, nope, start lean bulking, you're lean enough. Because back then, the body dysmorphia had really taken over. I was like, I'm not shredded enough. I'm shredded, but I'm not shredded enough. But I just, yeah, didn't have the muscle mass to justify getting leaner and I wasn't competing. So, you know, there was really no point. Like obviously I had enough muscle mass to look good, really good, but yeah, not enough to justify a further cut. So this is a quick little side-by-side -side comparison. As you can see, there is so much more abs there. And there's quite a bit of definition in the pecs and arms too. That may have just been because I got to a lower body fat percentage. But the fact that my training was a lot better when I came back from Denmark really helped. So it was a combination of both putting on a bit more muscle as well as getting shredded to the gills. Like, you can literally see the serratus, like the fish gills. 2018 rolls around and I start putting on a bit more fat, but as you can see, I'm still pretty lean. You can see in some of the pictures I tried to do that ab flex I was doing in the second last slide that we saw, but it just wasn't quite the same, but it was still pretty good. Because obviously I wasn't gonna sustain that level of leanness for much longer. It was really starting to take over too much of my life. Like during that time, I was only really working 20 to 25 hours a week at the supermarket and I wasn't doing the summer semester through uni, summer trimester through uni. So there was no study. There was only one job to worry about and it was just gym. But yeah, even with gym being my main focus, even that level of leanness was getting too much. So I started to slap on a bit more muscle. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a bit more muscle there than there was in the previous few months. So February rolls around and I go to Los Angeles with arguably my best friend at the time. We went to see the NBA All-Star game, but while we were there, it would be rude not to visit Venice Beach, Gold's Gym, hey. So as you can see, some of the pictures there are taken in the bathroom there. I had a few pictures with the green wall, but they're on my personal Instagram, and if I chucked them here, I guess people could cross-reference that image and find out who I am. Not that this channel will ever get that big for that to really concern me anyway. Point is, we went to Gold's Gym, and you can see that Gold's Gym stringer there. Some of those pictures were taken after we got back. Obviously, that those two pictures with me wearing the Gold's Gym stringer I got at Gold's Gym. And that middle picture, I look pretty wide and broad. Like, I don't know how I managed to keep so much size over there. Oh, I guess we we're only gone for a week. And you can see I've got some crappy little tattoo again in the left pic with the um, Los Angeles airport filter on. It's just a little tradition of mine to get some crappy little fake tattoo while I'm not in the country. 
So this slide's got a bunch of pictures from, as you can see, March to about July, I think. I'm not too sure. I dialed back on the gym and progress pics because this was when I really started to make leaps and bounds with my uni degree and my career. So not that it's too relevant for this channel, but this was when I started enrolling in some tax units and starting to take my studies more seriously. So I spent more time in the library than I did at the gym probably, which is obviously smarter in the long run. But I still made some pretty good gains. As you can see, I've put on a bit more fat. Like that, that picture where I'm in the underwear with like the messy hair that's popping up over that face cartoon drawing thing. You can see I've put on a bit of weight there, but I think that was later in the year. The other pictures you can see I'm quite a bit leaner. So they were probably closer to March, whereas that heavier pick was closer to July. You can see that picture where I'm showing my back to, I got a bit of back shred still and quite a bit of width as well. I think there's a little bit of booty there too. Hmm. So again, these are some more pics from roughly the same time period. One of them, you can see that little avarian dinosaurs tearing me to shreds, eating me alive. But I took that picture and put it here because there's some sneaky delt flex. Uh, you can see in the picture to the right of it, I've got my little Pokemon Maggie Carp to Gyarados, no pain, no gain shirt, I love it. And then the two pics to the right of that, you can see there's still a bit of shreds there. Nice little beach body. The picture on the top left was the first time I'd ever seen chest striations, like I'd never had them before. And I was wondering when I'd start getting them. I used to do the whole YouTube search, how to get chest striations, and then everyone would talk about cable crossovers, which does help. But a lot of people wouldn't talk about the actual answer, which was to get bigger pecs, which I got because I was now bulking and I was in a surplus and I was doing a push-pull legs, I believe. Now that's the best split for me personally. Right now I do like an upper-lower sort of hybrid because I can't gym six days a week, which is big sad. But my personal favorite is the push-pull legs split. So this slide's got no pictures of me at all, but it's got a little snapshot I took from roughly that same time period. And as you can see, there's an up and go high protein thingo and a whole block of dairy roast almond chocolate, I believe, while I was watching Family Guy. Ah, oh, I miss having time to watch Family Guy. Now I have to just keep my eye on the stock, mar stock market, the stock market and all that sort of finance stuff, which will be on my other channel. I don't mean to keep plugging it, but Look, if you're here for gym stuff, don't even check out that channel because it doesn't really have a lot. It's got a little bit, but not a lot. Point is, it shows the length of my surplus at this point. I don't remember off the top of my head how many calories I was eating, but I definitely logged it down. And I think I was honestly around 4,000, but I did have a lot of non-exercise activity thermogenesis in this time. So I was working maybe 20, 25 hours a week at the supermarket, which was pretty, pretty active. It was a pretty active job. And I would park 15 minutes from uni because they had a beach park, which was like 10 minutes from uni, but it had a time limit. And then there was another park in the supermarket, the supermarket, the shopping mall, which was about five minutes from uni, but it had a time limit and you had to pay. Whereas I parked outside someone's house, they're probably getting sick of seeing my car to be honest, but there was public space because it was just, you know, on the side of the road. And that had no time limit and no fees. So walking 15 minutes to uni every time I had class and 15 minutes back, that's half an hour of walking, plus the two, two and a half hour gym sessions I was having about six times a week, plus my active job which allowed me to eat this many calories. And the reason I didn't have clean calories was because I couldn't actually get that much in. And also I was bulking. So you know how when you bulk, you can eat whatever you want. That's, that's how it works, right? 
So October, November and December come around and it's time to cut again. So as you can see, I got pretty lean again. I didn't get as lean, but I had a lot more muscle on me this time. So overall, it looked, a, looked quite a bit better, to be honest. I, I did want to cut back further. Like I did want to go leaner, but I had two jobs at the time. I was doing summer study and I mean, I was still gymming, but basically the second job and the summer study really clogged up a lot of my time and mental space. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever done a severe cut before, but it's more a mental game than it is a physical one. And I couldn't function with any lower calories because it would really eat into my job and my studies, which was obviously more important to me at the time. And it still is, as it should be. But nonetheless, here are some pictures from late 2018 when I did my second successful cut. Because the last two, yeah, I got somewhere, but I didn't really look that good. You're meant to look good after a cut. That's kind of the point. Otherwise, why would you voluntarily eat less? Makes no sense, unless it's for health reasons, but I digress. So these are the last pics from 2018. This was quite late in December as well. I believe it was like the 20th because I remember this session was after one of the last days for the year at work at the accounting job I had at the time. And I remember it was quite a rough day at work and I really just grinded out this session like because it was such a rough day. I don't know if you guys have the better gym sessions after rougher days, but that tends to be what happened here. I remember hitting a 150 kilo deadlift for five reps, and then I got six reps on the next set, which made no sense. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but for someone who really isn't a power lifter, and I was this lean as well, it was decent. Uh, obviously, there are other people out there who are, who are even leaner, who can lift a lot more but considering my priorities at the time given my whole the whole I was ramping up my career after that major setback in 2017 that's not too shabby so for 2019 we started the year off pretty well I'll admit I was basically doing a recomp I'd heard of a recomp working from Stan Efferding and the 3DMJ Godfather in one of his podcasts. Basically, the point is if you actually maintain for a while and keep the same weight, your body will actually start to look better at that heavier weight. Now, I was skeptical at first, but of course, these two guys know a lot more than I do. So I tried it anyway, and as you can see, it appears to have worked. Like, I think I look better and I was eating at maintenance and I weighed the same as I did. I weighed the same at the end of January as I did at the end of December. So I can't remember what a PV, PBV1 is. It was some sort of cryptic new workout program that I made up. I think it was a sort of full body hybrid. At that time, I had seen a Jeff Nippard video talking about the benefits of full body training with Eric Helms. And I'd also seen Joe Delaney do this as well. Actually, I'm not sure if he did that afterwards, but I remember doing a sort of hybrid. So like one workout, you'd have like a bench press and another pec movement, but you'd also have like a leg press and a split squat as well as, uh, I don't know, some arm movements and a back movement here and then another day you'd start off with squats but then your pec movements would be isolations that kind of stuff i'm not going to elaborate here because at this point this video is probably about 44 minutes if i elaborated on absolutely everything this would be a four hour video no doubt so the only pick i had obviously was that snapchat saved I think the idea was to see how I was going to grow over the coming months. And yeah, I posted that to my story, just trying to be cryptic. Oh, look at me. I'm starting this new secret workout program. And as you'll see in the next slide, 
that didn't really last very long. So that middle pick you'll see beginning six month HLR experiment. I have no idea what that means anymore. Hybrid lower rotation experiment. I literally have no idea. But once again, me being cryptic, oh, look at this secret new thing I'm trying. I'm gonna look so good because of this one secret trick. Uh, so anyway, um, the picture on the right in the Woolies uniform, you can see the peck and ab separation there. It was, it was tempting to rock up to work unbuttoned like that, but yeah, that looked pretty crazy, hey? As for the pick above the Woolies one, I remember looking at that and thinking, damn, I look huge. Like, look, you can see the pec striations. The pec covers the whole, well, like, pec region. It's not just like a bit of lower pec and middle pec. Like, there's some upper pec as well, as well as some delts and biceps. So, that was a, yeah, that was, that was a pretty good pick, I'll say. Now, I know this slide says February, but I'm pretty sure the pick on the left was actually March because I remember doing a photo shoot with two of the girls at my gym. They'd hired a photographer and I got wind of it and I was like, oh, hey, can I be a part of it? And they're like, oh yeah, sure, you know, why not? So I got a few sneaky picks, which was good. Obviously got a solid pump beforehand. So that's why I remember that being from March because that photo shoot was a week before I lost my first accounting job, which was in the middle of March. This, the day may have been the 8th where this pic was taken, but nonetheless, it's around February, March. So these pictures are from a university party that I went to with my mate. It was like a toga party, so we dressed up as like those um, Romans and Greek gods and whatever you want to call it. Basically, we interpreted that as show as much skin as you can without getting kicked out. So obviously we took bucket loads of pics beforehand. There's even more than what's here, believe it or not. But yeah, it was a good night to just flex on the competition. At one point we like took the togas off and started muzzing the way Ziz would want us to. And everyone sort of dispersed from the dance floor. They were either A, sick of these entitled arrogant douchebags or two they were miring too hard they were probably miring too hard obviously right so here you're seeing two picks one of them was another pick i took from the toga as you can see there's a nice little bit of a bit of a delt flex there you can see a nice nice bit of cap going on there so that was pretty good to see that's just while we were sitting down we were sort of just getting the vibe of the whole scene before you know waltzing straight onto the dance floor now the second pick obviously it's not a gym related pick but this will basically preface what's to come for the rest of the year so i'm sure you've gotten the hint now that my whole life doesn't revolve around gym although it is an integral part of it that picture is my pass for my internship at the tax office now I'm not gonna go into it here. Eventually I'll do a video on my other channel about my experience as an intern at the Australian Taxation Office. But obviously this will have taken up some of my time. Like I would have lost sleep because I can't sleep in and just rock up to the internship whenever I wanted. But with that being said, because I lost the other accounting job, it kind of balanced out like I remember when I got accepted for this internship that I was like, oh crap, how, long, how am I gonna balance, you know, my supermarket job, my accounting job, my internship, my gym, my basketball too. I was playing basketball through this whole time. I haven't actually mentioned that once, but I'll mention it later in one of the other slides as you'll see. But yeah, how am I gonna do my study as well for uni? I was also studying Cert 4 too at this point, which will also show up later, I believe. Yeah, it will show up later actually. So I was like, oh crap, how am I gonna balance gym because gym's already starting to slip to a point where I don't want it to be. Like it was still a high priority, but at this point my workouts were about 
five days a week as opposed to six and I really just wanted that sixth working day like one of my gym sessions had to be extra long to make up for the volume that I wanted and it was really wearing on me but anyway life's not all about gym so I mean as you'll see later my progress started to slip a little bit which was a trade-off I wasn't really too happy about but it was one I had to do because you know, I'm not going to be the most ripped guy at the line in Centrelink when I'm 33 years old, you know what I mean? So this was probably the biggest I'd ever gotten. As you can see, I have the most muscle I've ever had. Like there's a little bit more fat, but the abs are a lot thicker and more dense than they used to be. Like you may not be able to tell just because there's a little bit more fat there, but if I strip down to the same percentage of body fat I was in late 2017, these things would have looked insane. You can see in that top pick next to the 2019 sign, there's quite a lot of arm mass there. I never really had a whole lot of arm mass, but I think it's because of the more frequent training because I was doing that sort of full body workout thing. Because in years past, I never actually had an arm day apart from the bro science days in 2015, but nutrition was off, training intensity and volume just weren't there, so that doesn't really count. But I'd always tack on arms at the end of a push or a pull workout or the end of any other workout. I didn't really mention this, but in 2017, the first half of the year, I was doing like a three day split because I wanted to focus on uni. As mentioned before, I failed three out of four subjects the previous trimester. So I figured that, or the previous semester, I figured that if I only gymmed three days a week, then the rest of the time I could spend studying but the problem is I'd get lazy on those days and wouldn't. But my workouts then were like three to three and a half hours because I'd I'd like squat, bench and deadlift. No, I'd squat, bench and pull up every workout. And obviously that takes a lot of recovery and warm up time, as well as doing a lot of volume for, well, not a lot, but doing enough volume for shoulders and triceps and biceps too. Made some progress, but that's not the point. The point is, the extra arm mass was probably the result of a higher frequency of training for them. So you'll see there's pictures with that little dinosaur as well. Uh, the top one, obviously just some delt flexing there and some pec, you can tell there's some pec there too. And the one below it's obviously a back flex. And the picture on the far right, you can see, I'd never taken a picture that close up before, but you can see like the outlines of like the whole pec there and some of the biceps and delts too. So here are some more pics from roughly that same time period. The first two pictures on the left hand side, I'm also arm pictures. You can see there's a little bit more arm mass than there used to be, especially the top one. There's a lot of delt there. And then obviously the picture on the right is more so an arm flex. I think I was trying to show off a bit of the waist being slim too. Now it's been slimmer in the past, but considering how much muscle I'd put on during this point, I was surprised to see that my waist wasn't thicker than this. So that was probably the biggest I'd ever been in my whole life. And it may have been the biggest I've ever gotten, as you'll eventually see. The beginning of the end. So as I alluded to before, I was doing a cert for, I didn't actually say what it was, a cert for in fitness, alongside my bachelor's degree of commerce with my accounting major. Now, I had my heart set on working at Good Life. We had a practical class during cert three at a local good life and I was like I love this gym because I didn't want to be a PT at a Derrimuth's gym because I was just way too small for that and I didn't want to be a PT at the anytime gym I, would go, I was going to so I wanted to switch it up and I didn't want to be a PT at one of those like independent gyms I wanted to be a PT at a franchise gym and then I realized good life exists and I was like yes so I accepted a job at a Good Life franchise that was about 30 minutes away from the one we first visited. And the reason was because everyone knew I was doing an accounting major at the time at uni, but they didn't know I was doing a Cert 4. And I didn't want to be training at a gym and then have to explain to everyone that 
I've got a plan of having two jobs, one as an accountant and two as a personal trainer. Now that eventually didn't work out, but again, it's elaborated on the other channel or it will be eventually. But the point is I wanted to be away from that thing, like keep my PT and my corporate thing separate. Kind of like how I'm keeping my face separate from this whole thing. Maybe I've always been like this, hey. But taking a job as a PT means your, your schedule has now become extremely inconsistent and you have to get up at stupid hours of the morning and then you have to try and nap during the day to make up for sleep, which just isn't as ideal as sleeping a full way through. I was used to a more like structured routine. Now with Woolworths, sometimes my shifts were like three to 10, three to eight, five to 10, eight to five, 10 or three. But you can see that I do a shift the full way through. I don't do like a eight till nine, 11 till 12, two till four, six till seven, 7.30 to 8.30, you know what I'm saying? So the point of all that is my training had to start to, well, it started to take a back seat because if I only have an hour gap, I can't get a proper workout because by the time I warm up for my compound movements and get through my compound movements, the time's up and I need to go and train someone else. And then you gotta get warmed up again to do the rest of the workout and basically it was just, the training was very inconsistent. Like there were some days where, or well, some weeks where I only worked out twice during the whole week and none of them were compound movements. Like there were no compound movements in the actual workout because they took too long to warm up for. So I axed them entirely and it was evident in my physique as you'll soon see. So these pictures are taken around August to October now the picture at the bottom was in some Airbnb room and the reason I was there, it was in Melbourne, and the reason I was there was because I was doing a good life induction at the time. So for those of you who don't know, when you sign up to good life, it may have changed after COVID, but I'm not sure, but basically you do two days of induction. If you're in Victoria, where I'm from, you have to do them in, one of them's in Juan Turner and the other one's in Coburg. But eventually on this channel, I'll elaborate about my whole experience as a personal trainer at Good Life. Once again, this video is going to be long enough as it is. But the I didn't look too bad there. Like you can see some pec definition and some arm tone as well. The picture to the right of that was in the Good Life change rooms. There's a little bit of arm, but I think I lost a bit of back width as you can see. Or that might just be how the pictures being condensed and the two pictures at the top of me wearing the Ben Simmons jersey the one on the left is at the lockers in good life and the one on the right is the lockers at any time so I had I was holding a bit of arm mass there and then the pick in the middle obviously that's me wearing the good life top and we had a photo shoot and I didn't actually have they, they were changing the tops at the time and I hated the way the new the yeah hated the way the new tops looked so we were borrowing the old tops for the new photo shoot if you didn't have the new ones already and basically i never actually returned this one and i don't think he missed it because i think he had quite a few and little secret i think this was a ladies top the ladies tops are good because their arms go further up so it makes you look bigger like i don't know if you guys noticed but like girls sort of like t-shirts and stuff show a lot more arm than the guys t-shirts so little secret if you want a sneaky flex you can always buy women's clothes i'm just joking not really though so the two pictures on the right are around september i believe now the one with the i guess quote better lighting was at some friend's house uh, i rocked up there after a nine hour woolly shift i'm usually a bit bloated after them but as you can see i'm definitely losing some mass and some shreds as well and the picture on the right was before i left the next day and i looked a bit leaner but that's because of the whole like natural sunlight thing through the bathroom windows 
I know you guys know what I'm talking about. And obviously you hadn't really had breakfast or anything. So yeah, there's that. As you can see, I'm starting to starting to lose it. So October rolls around and as you can see, there's no gym picks here, but as I alluded to before with the um, tax office picture, there was a lot more going on in my life than just the whole just gymming all the time. So the top pick on the left was a picture from my graduation ceremony. Obviously I blurred out the university because I don't want to make it, you know, I don't want to give people clues as to who I am. Again, not like that, that's really a problem because this channel's way too small for that anyway. But the point is, I graduated university. So obviously throughout the year I was doing some study for that and Jim had to sort of sack off a little bit. The picture below the university graduation one is a snapshot I took at a CPA lecture. Now the reason I rocked up to this was to get, I guess, extra credit for my resume and to network as well. I remember this one actually, I had gymmed right before it and because I consumed so much, so much fluid at the gym, I was busting to go to the toilet the whole drive here. That's, that's very irrelevant information. Um, I think the point I was getting at was I still gymmed on this day, but obviously I couldn't really get all the necessary meals in that I would have gotten in years past. But the other point is I was doing extra stuff for my career. The next picture on the right with me holding a medal, that was after we won our basketball championship. Now looking back, I think this was actually in September. But I figured I'd chuck it on this slide anyway, just to show the other stuff that was going on. So one night of basketball a week really sort of interfered with um, Jim because that was one night of Jim that I lost. Although some nights I'll admit I tended to go to the gym before basketball, but sometimes I didn't do this because I wanted to actually, you know, have a decent game. So, playing sport on top of the whole gym routine, it's not completely ideal. And we didn't have basketball training this season, this season in particular. We still won, because we're great. Keen-eyed sports players might notice that the ribbon colour is red, which would imply second, because blue usually implies first, and red second and green third. But for some reason, this time, the Ribbons were red when you were the winner and blue when you were the first loser, as Kobe Bryant would say. But yeah, for some reason they changed it, but trust me, we won. I wouldn't really be flexing if we came second, although making, to, making it to the grand final is a pretty good accomplishment in itself. So this basically marked the end of my basketball career. Not like you could have done much with it next season anyway, because next season bled into the whole COVID time, which we'll get to. Now the picture on the right was me in a suit, obviously, and you can see that filter, Richmond. So where I live, Richmond is about a two and a half hour drive, if you count traffic, which you should. Now the reason this is relevant was because it's another career thing I had to do. And these were the lengths I was going to, to get my career up and running. Like I was willing to accept a job, well I didn't, get an offer so I couldn't accept it but I was willing to rock up to an interview two and a half hours from home knowing full well that it was going to absolutely just destroy my gym routine because obviously you'll have a nine hour work day and two and a half hour commute each way you're not going to have time for gym after that and this firm also expected overtime too but that was the lengths I was willing to go to like I was willing to let gym just fall to the wayside to get my career up and running. So November to December rolls around. These are some pictures during that time period. You can tell I don't look too bad, but the only reason I don't look too bad was because I kept cutting through the whole time. So I remember I got down to 75 kilos. Now the leanest or the lightest I got in 2018, roughly this time the previous year, was about 78 kilos. So I was three kilos lighter and I had less muscle so I had I probably lost a bit more fat even though I looked leaner in the other pics 
Point is, the reason I didn't look terrible was because I got quite lean. As you can obviously see. So here are some more pics from around December. You can see that top one, I was doing some weird flex in the Anytime Gym. You can see I've lost a bit of arm mass and there's a little less ab definition and the pecs aren't popping as much. Although it could just be the lighting. The pic beneath it was a picture I took at the Good Life Gym. You can see I'm looking kind of all right there, but obviously that was after a pump and it was the lighting in that change room was pretty decent, I'll admit. The picture next to it was another gym I took in the old Anytime change rooms, you know, the one where a lot of my pics have been with the prime lighting. As you can see, looking pretty lean there, but it's because if I took the shirt off, you could tell that it's not as that I'm not as good because I lost some pec mass especially in the upper pecs and some arm mass but you can't really see those in here you can't really see those in this pic so that's why it kind of looked all right and I had done like five sets of abs for this pic like I don't normally do that many I do maybe two or three but I knew I was gonna take a sneaky pic while I was at those anytime toilets because you can see that date filter the 7th or the 12th this was a Thursday from memory because the Friday I went to see Frozen. I went on a date with some girl. Um, didn't really work out, obviously, but that's besides the point. The point is I started a new accounting job on the Monday beforehand. And no, it wasn't the Richmond one, thank God. It was one that was only like 25 minutes from home. And it was literally a block away from another anytime gym. So that's why I remember taking this pick. I was like, this is probably the last pick I'm going to get at this gym for a good while. And you can see the two pictures on the right. One of them's in my bedroom wearing a top I got from the study abroad program. You can see a little bit of arms there. And then another one in the good life change rooms at the PT job. You can see I'm looking pretty big there, but it was probably after a pump. And obviously good lighting too. 2020. Now the picture looks like it's taken from some YouTube horror thing, but it was just taken at the docks down at the waterfront, sort of close to where I live. I had a pretty big New Year's party that night. I remember working at my accounting jig, jig, accounting gig during the day, and then I worked at Woolies that night, and then I went out right after that. Just hung out, hung out with a bunch of some friends from high school, some friends from uni, some friends from work. It was a really good night overall. So we were all assuming that 2020 was going to be a good year and we were wrong. This night was probably as good as 2020 got. So yeah, as you can see, just a couple of delt flexes there. A pic on the left just in my room. Still looking okay, but nowhere near as good as one of the pics I took this time last year in the same room in 2019 as you would have seen in the previous, well, in one of the previous slides. Now the picture on the right, I'm looking pretty big there, but I'm starting to think that this was actually around July, August of 2019, just based on the lighting below the legs and the overall color of the room, because the gym had done some renovation and it looked all right. I preferred it the way it used to be, but I mean, obviously the lighting and renovation was still the same at this time in 2020, but just based on the fact that I actually have some delts and biceps leads me to believe that this pic doesn't actually belong in this slide. But anyway, point is I'm starting to shrink even more. So the picture on the left is taken at the new gym I was at. Now I didn't really take many pics then because my workouts were only an hour and a half and I was just trying to get back some size that I lost throughout Good Life. So at this point, I'd actually resigned from Good Life because I was working five days a week at the accounting gig and I was doing my two weekend shifts and a weekend night at Woolies. And the other six spare nights, I had my own training. Now one, I, I did the um, Good Life job for about three weeks into this whole new accounting job but there was one night in particular, I was at Good Life for four nights out of that week and I was just so wrecked from it. I was like, there's no way I can sustain this. I remember having a client, well, like a prospect 
uh, uh, eventually I'll elaborate in that good life video so if you're watching this months from now maybe check out the channel the video might be up now but I had a prospect and he seemed really keen on training but I jacked up my price to a point where I knew he'd say no just because I really didn't want to be a good life anymore like I really didn't want to have that obligation because a seven day a week obligation was enough for me and nowadays it's nothing but you know you have to slowly build up your tolerance but I digress you can see the pick on the far right too there's a bit of an arm pump there's a little bit of arms there but as you can tell I've kind of shrunk a bit and then the picture in the middle 8th of March 2020 look at that I look like crap I look like I how I did back in like 2016 like geez talk about a fall from grace I remember this pic actually it was right before a Labor Day party I had now this Labor Day party was funny actually I yeah I definitely went out that night and COVID wasn't really like it was starting to become a thing but just not in Australia I remember the boss of the accounting gig I was at at the time he had joked about drinking coronas but not catching corona on the cruise he went on and i believe the last cruise he went on was the last one they cancelled before they were starting to really start to lock things down and i remember there were some talks about a potential lockdown for like the whole country and the boss was saying i don't think it'll happen but if everyone can work from home can you work from home and turns out he was wrong there was lockdowns but we'll get to that point is i remember this night who could have foreseen what would happen in the next two weeks now the picture on the top right it says fuck diet support local businesses local small businesses now this was taken from my lunch room on the 18th of march 2020 this was when everyone had started to stop going out as much because they were worried about catching the virus and there was there was a lot of like instagram posts about supporting local businesses during the time which i fully agreed so obviously i didn't actually have my usual beef and sweet potato meal for lunch i had a pie and a donut from the local bakery now talk about pictures taken moments before disaster about three hours after this picture was taken I got pulled into an office and I basically lost my job. I'll elaborate again on the other channel because this video has gone on long enough and you're not here to hear about my life story, you're here to hear about my gym journey, although these little life segments are relevant in the grand scheme of the whole gym thing. Point is, lost the job, which really, really fucking hurt to be honest, but I got better overall. And you'll see in the next slides, it really got me to ramp up my gym again. I know what you're thinking, but how could you ramp up gym when all the gyms were locked down? Well, cue the picture on the far left. I actually had a home gym. Now I got this in 2019 in December because this was when I started the whole three jobs thing. And I was like, I can't train at good life after I've trained someone because it's just too busy I just can't get the equipment I wanted so if I get something at home maybe at worst case I can get up an hour earlier not that I not that I want to sacrifice sleep but at least it might be something if I get up an hour earlier to train at the gym you know in my shed then maybe I'll be able to salvage some gains now you could also say well why don't you get up earlier and go to an actual gym well the gym is kind of out of the way of any of my obligations like the gym i was signed up to was about 10 minutes from woolies the gym was too busy in the morning to go before my accounting job and i couldn't guarantee getting a shower either and i'm not going to rock up there all stinky and sweaty remember this was back in 2019 when i still actually was at both jobs what well, both at good life and accounting i was still at woolies so i yeah i figured i'd get a home gym just to try and salvage some gains and turns out it was probably the best thing i could have done in terms of 2020 so 
I had a squat rack, the weights went up to about 137 and a half kilos, which is fine because I wasn't deadlifting at home. I can deadlift more than that, but I can't squat or bench that much because as you can see, there's just carpet there and I wasn't really bothered to make a deadlift platform. And you can't see in the picture anyway, but there's really not much extra room to deadlift anyway. So yeah, at least I could bench and squat a lot. And I had enough dumbbells, like I bought dumbbells as well. So I had 12 and a half kilo dumbbells, 15 kilos, 20 kilos and 30 kilos, I think. Well, maybe I don't have 12 and a half, but the point is I had enough to like do some incline pressing and some bicep and tricep movements, some shoulder movements and some rowing as well, which is what the 30 kilo ones were for, even though I just did penlay rows and pull ups anyway. Point is, I had more than enough to make a good, decent workout. I didn't really have, oh, actually I did have sort of cables. So there were like cables attached to this squat rack so I could do like tricep press downs and I could also do like rope upright rows, which was, which is probably my favorite exercise. Point is, I could still gym and now I had a lot more time to. So as you can see in the other pictures, I got a bit of size back. You can see in the middle picture, there's a lot of size in the quads, thanks squatting a lot. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's a bit of arm size I've gotten back to. Topic you're seeing, that snap filter, pull up PRs did happen, not bad, good sesh. So the fact that I was able to get pull up PRs, despite my training being so unoptimal for so long, just goes to show how much gym was really ramped up. But a lot of it was the extra rest I was getting because I was only really working like 24 to 32 hours at Woolies as opposed to the 60, 70 hour work weeks I was doing the months preceding this month. But also I was having so much more calories. As you can see in the bottom pick, that was everything I would consume in one 15 minute break from my Woolies job. I would drink that Oh, actually, no, maybe I didn't drink that whole bottle of milk, but I drink half of it and have the whole tub of yogurt and I'd have that whole block of chocolate or maybe I'd split that up into lunch because that's probably too much fiber for one particular meal, especially given the amount of calories in that meal. Like there's a lot, but there's not enough to justify like this might be completely wrong, but there's probably like 10 ish grams of fiber in that. That could be completely wrong. But the point is it was a smarter move to separate the fiber. Uh, as you can see from that snap filter, the daily trifecta of potassium and probiotics. Probiotics has some evidence to support that it's helpful and potassium helps nerve impulses amongst other things. It works well in tandem with sodium, which I was just salting a lot of my meals a lot. And I was having like a shot of sodium before each workout. There's a video that Stan Efferding did on basically the benefits of sodium. Definitely check it out. I'll link it if I can remember. But point is calories and sleep were way up. So the gains were starting to return. So there's a large time gap here, May to October. The reason being was because I didn't really take too many pictures. Most of them were basically just in these two positions, just the sitting down on my bed or the arm flex in the bathroom as you can see a lot of size came back but my heaviest I got to was 92.7 kilos which was the heaviest I'd ever been and I was having about 5,000 to 5,500 calories a day so yeah obviously I was getting a lot bigger and I was getting so much stronger too like I miss the strength I used to have here but you know life's not all about gym also during this time i went back to uni to do a sort of graduate certificate of artificial intelligence for business so that tended to eat up some of the gym time as well i think that started in about july so my training in may and june was probably the best because that was the only real priority i had and then i obviously had some woolly shifts but yeah i went back to study 
So with that study, training was no longer the main priority, even though it was still a big priority, obviously. But I remember there was quite a handful of sessions that I would skip just to make sure I had my assignment work done on time. Having a bit of PTSD from my bachelor's degree, I sought to get the best grades possible. And I averaged a 78.25 Wham, which is pretty damn good rewriting the wrongs of my past but again that story is on the other channel so november to december rolls around and obviously i cut because 92.7 kilos is way too heavy for me for someone who's 182 centimeters tall and yeah i did have a bit of muscle but it wasn't 92.7 kilos worth there was quite a bit of fat too so I'm surprised, I kind of dropped the weight a lot quicker than I was expecting, like I don't think I started cutting super early. I wish I had documented it a little bit more, that would have been nice, but nonetheless, you can see I got a bit leaner, again, the picture at the bottom is just another delt flex as usual. The pic in my bedroom with um the dull lighting, you can kind of tell that I'm a little bit on the chubbier side, but it's not too bad. The pick on the top left, you can see I'm doing, oh, that's a new gym. I got, I signed up to a new gym because Anytime had imposed a one hour restriction and bookings. And this gym didn't have any of that. And it was also about 10 to 15 minutes from my gym, whereas the Anytime was from my gym, 10 to 15 minutes from home. And the Anytime gym was about 25 to 30 minutes from home. So it was a no brainer to sign up here. And plus I could just duck there after a woolly shift anyway. Like the region around our hometown had a gym for years prior to this, but it wasn't that flash. Whereas this one, I think it used to be a restaurant, but then they, the restaurant obviously didn't do so well. So new owners bought it, they turned it into a gym and it was a pretty sick gym to be honest. So yeah, I signed up there and the top, the pictures that are, well, the two highest up pictures on the slides are pictures I took from that gym. So yeah, as you can see, got a got a bit of mass back as well. And that picture on the right, I was brushing my teeth. I remember I sent this picture to someone from work just cause like, we were talking and I was brushing my teeth and I was like, oh, whatever, just take this pic. And I was like, oh damn, I look pretty lean here. Obviously not as ripped as I once was, but Considering how many calories I was having and how heavy I got, I'm really surprised I got this lean this quick. But anyway, that was the end of 2020. So 2021 rolls around. Now I didn't mention this in the other slide, but basically after I had graduated uni for the second time, I had recruiters texting me and messaging me and emailing me and all that, asking if I was interested in some jobs that were going around. Now I had a bit of PTSD from losing my second accounting job in a row. I had told myself that I wasn't going to bother looking until the end of 2021, but these, like I'm not going to say no to trying for a job if I have the opportunity, especially if they're, well they're not being handed to me on a silver platter because obviously you still need to do the whole interview process, but the jobs in a way were coming to me. so. I think everyone was starting to open up again because the the worst of the economic turmoil was over. Like there was still still some of it, but the absolute worst of it was over. So some of my gym sessions in November and December slipped a little bit for the purposes of job interview preparation and job interviews themselves. But obviously that's a worthwhile trade-off. So I got accepted into a job which I started on the 4th of January this year. So yeah, obviously training had to take a sort of backseat again. But as you can see, I was still looking all right. But keep in mind that this was the result of having a pretty hard bulk throughout a lot of 2020 and then cutting a lot of the fat off. So this wasn't like I kept this physique while working my new seven day routine with study and gym too. This was quite early in the year. So as you can see in the um the middle pick, this this wasn't the best pick I took. I took a better one, but it was on my camera roll and 
I didn't take it on my Snapchat. I probably should have posted that. In fact, I might edit this out and post it again because it's a better pick, but I had a lot of mass and I was quite lean, so it was pretty good to see. And then I took that picture right before I had some sort of Woolies party, which is why I'm wearing like black jeans. And then, yeah, the picture on the left was some little flex and some tradey sort of singlet. I had to go and get boots for the new job because we don't have to wear office stuff. We just get to wear sort of what we want. So I wore some comfy boots and I saw these little stringers and I was like, yes, please. And they fit really well. And you can see there's, there's quite a bit of side peck there, a bit of delt, looks pretty nice. And the pick at the top, you can see I've gotten some mass back and I'm a little bit lean. So throughout all of January, February and March of 2021, I was essentially eating at maintenance calories. And the reason was because I wasn't, well, I was training pretty well, to be honest, but I didn't have faith in myself that I could lose all that fat again. Like if I got as fat as I did at the end of 2020 with a full-time job, I had no faith that I could lose it all just because as you guys know, work, well, a lot of jobs kind of interfere with gym a bit. It was easy to cut then because Woolies is kind of an active job and I'm sort of used to, I guess, controlling my hunger there, but it's a little bit different in an office environment, especially because you have some mental stress, which can lead you to snack on some stuffs in the tea room so yeah i didn't have faith that i could drop all the fat if i gained it again so i stayed at maintenance and as you can see i still looked pretty decent pretty lean again the whole recomp thing i'm pretty sure that's what happened because i definitely didn't really bulk as you can see in the picture on the far right if anything i look a little bit leaner so yeah basically recomped slash maintained for a few months so there's a large time gap between these pictures, obviously. So I really backed off on all the gym pics because I was doing my CPA studies and working a lot. So yeah, I was gymming, but I wasn't really, like I was doing progressive overload and I was making, I like eyeballed the calories. So I knew I was in a surplus and getting enough protein, but I wasn't really tracking much. And obviously I wasn't really tracking any progress pictures either because I kind of knew that I'd grow from it and I also didn't really care too much at that point like to be honest a few months of that year my whole gym workout was just on cruise control and it was just I was just going through the motions really because obviously I actually managed to hold this accounting job after probation which was very important to me and it is obviously my priority as well as CPA studies which is like post uni for those of you who don't know what it is. It's basically like above uni. It's kind of like a master's, but not really. But yeah, working seven days a week, as well as that kind of study, gym kind of takes a back seat. And this is when I really started to get into like investments and stuff. So as opposed to watching gym videos all the time, like I did in years past, a lot of it was just money and investment stuff. So by the time I got to gym, all I could think about was, oh, I'm gonna check out this stock later or this crypto later, or oh, what can I do with this money here? As opposed to back then, I was like, hell yeah, let's get into this workout and get a good pump, make some PRs, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I just went through the motions for a lot of it. The picture at the top on the left was around May to June. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of size there, even some size in the quad. But that was probably before my training started to really slip and I started to just, to just really go through the motions. Uh, that middle pick was a pick I took for one of the first YouTube videos I made on this channel. As you can see, filming myself doing some pen lay rows, there's quite a bit of lat mass there. Blurred my face, obviously, had to use that YouTube editor thing. So, yeah, anyway, these are just some pics from around that time period. Wasn't really as into it as I used to be. And here are some pictures from December of 2021. 
So the two pictures on either side are from a holiday I went to in Crown. As you can see on the right, there's not a lot of pec mass or ab development as there was in years past. I can't help but compare it to that Woolies pic where I looked really diced. You know, the one where my buttons were all undone and you could see the pec mass and the abs. And then the pic on the left was a picture I took in the bathroom, decent lighting. As you can see, there's some shoulder width there, a little bit of arms, a bit of pecs, some abs, but clearly I'm not as lean, hence why I was covering the stomach region. And the picture in the middle was just some Snapchat I took and I thought my arm looked pretty big there, which it kind of does. So at the start of 2022, I've basically made a new diet because I really want to get back to where I used to be and now I've learned how to manage the whole seven day work week and study and gym and investments and all that stuff. So if you see the previous video on this channel, I'll once again, I'll do a link if I can remember, but I've made a new diet and I've gone through why I've gone over it and why I believe it will actually work because it's taken elements of my best bulks in years past and basically condense them down into my current circumstances. I've also made a new training routine, one where I won't just be going through the motions. And once again, same with the diet, I've taken elements from my most successful bulks in years past and condensed them down into a routine that's more applicable and realistic to comply with given my current circumstances with the whole work and study thing. I also just realized the other day that I can do this weird calisthenics movement thing. I literally don't even know what it's called, but I've put a video of it right here to show you what, what I can do. I may have been able to do this in years past, but I remember just scrolling through Instagram the other day and seeing this guy do it. Like I'd seen it done before, but it was funny because the reactions from some of the people in the gym were just insane and I was like, huh, I wonder if I can do that. And the other day at the end of one of my arm workouts, I just tried it and I was like, oh, I can do this. So then I did it after my leg day workout too. And going forward, it's probably going to become a consistent thing. Like I'll probably do some of the movements at the end of each workout. So that's been my absolute roller coaster of a fitness journey so far. Gym has changed my life in ways I never thought were possible. It sounds very cheesy and I know everyone says it but trust me there's there's no substitute for this feeling like you just feel so much more confident. You feel like life's was a little bit deep but life's worth living like there's always something to look forward to every day like you've got your training like, like it's it's different for me because I look forward to my jobs and the ever-changing stock and crypto market each day even though it's trash right now but it's so fulfilling knowing that you can just get better day by day month by month year by year now obviously the last few years of my gym schedule weren't the best but the progress i made in the other aspects of my life were second to none i would gladly make that same trade-off again if need be, although I'd prefer not to. But going back through all of this, it's really given me a kick up the ass and really shown that if I'm consistent and I stick to my diet, then I can really go places with this thing. So for those of you who are still watching to this point, I just want you to know that if you just stick with it, you will get there. You can see from my progress over the years, like. You could have honestly made the progress I made from 2015 to 2019 in about half the time if you were really consistent and knew what you were doing. But it doesn't really matter because unless you're getting paid for this, who cares how long it takes? The important thing is you enjoy the journey. Like every food in my current diet, I enjoy eating. Like I look forward to eating it. And I look forward to training. Now, it wasn't really always like that, but you've just got to make it interesting. And it helps when 
you've actually made some progress too because you know it'll work. I also know that this hasn't been your average transformation. Normally those transformations are about four minutes and they're just like a montage with some hard techno rock sort of music, whatever, playing in the background. I might do a short snippet version of that eventually, but I think it's beneficial to talk about the actual routine itself because giving you the behind the scenes perspective of how I changed really helps apply it to your situation. Joe Delaney did one for about 30 minutes and I was thinking mine was going to take maybe 20 and it took probably almost an hour longer than that because I really went into depth with a lot of things. But his video was really helpful. Like it was entertaining to me because at the time it came out in 20 late, no it came out in 2018 I believe because I remember watching it on the flight back from Los Angeles which was 2018. I really liked how he talked about how his training was revolving around his life because I feel that some people starting out, they look at the fitness industry and they think that everyone who's in exceptional shape does nothing but gym all day, which is true to an extent. You see all the fitness influencers, their whole day revolves around training, so of course they look great. I look at me in 2000. 17, 18, and 19. Yeah, I had other stuff going on, but gym was my main priority then. Like, I could sleep in pretty much every day, and I would center gym around... Well, I would center the rest of my day around gym because I could study whenever I wanted. Like, yeah, I had to show up to work and basketball whenever they wanted, but I never had to get up early for it back then. Whereas now I need to set an alarm for every day of the week, so sleep's slowly been dipping. But the point is, this is a realistic transformation. Not in the sense that it's natural, but in the sense that it is revolved around someone who... Not to be degrading to the other fitness fanatics out there, but around someone who has more of a normal or hectic life. Eventually, I'll probably make a video around how I structure my training around my lifestyle, but basically it's just train whenever you want. There's minimal benefits to training at night or versus training in the day versus training in the morning. Just train when you can, find a way to enjoy it. And like Joel Embiid says, trust the process. I'm very curious as to see what I'll look like next year, and the year after that, and the year after that, and all the other years after that. Anyway, that is all.